Today was another summer like day as it is still fall time and we're not seeing the fall come around anytime soon as even currently these feel like temperatures are near the 90s and even that high feel like temperature today was near the triple digits. We'll continue to see these feel like temperatures as those dew points are going to continue to stay into the 60s and even near the 70s as Meridian saw this dew point of a 70 even currently right now. We'll continue to see these feel like temperatures but there's a chance for some rain this weekend. We'll take a look at that full forecast here in a little bit. You're watching Fox 23 News. Tonight at 9, we introduce you to the inaugural class of Hattiesburg's Hall of Fame. Tune in next to find out who's a part of it. An important piece of art in the Pine Belt is now gone. Forest County residents react on social media and the Board of Supervisors explains their decision. I'll have the full story for you up next. Good evening, I'm Anna Manuel. And I'm Mark Edwards. Thanks for watching Fox 23 News at 9. Many Forest County residents upset with the county's Board of Supervisors for demolishing the Pat Harrison Waterway District building. Now that building contained a mural that some think uh, was an important part of history. In our top story, Fox 23's Corey Howard explains why the board decided to tear that building down. This pile of rubble is all that remains of the Pat Harrison Waterway District office building. The board made the decision to take the building down primarily because of a request by Forest Health, Forest General Hospital to use that space for future uh, medical expansions. At the recent backlash the board received on social media, board member Chris Bowen took to Facebook to explain the board's decision, stating it pains our board to have to make decisions that might upset anyone. And further down in his post, Bowen explained the reason why Forest General Hospital needed to expand their facility, stating, Forest General is not just filling beds for the sake of fun. Their 600 plus beds stay full because rural hospitals are closing down and we're fortunate to have a place to accommodate them. And while many Forest County residents may be upset about the removal of this precious piece of art, Board of Supervisors President David Hogan says the board could not find another solution. I did look at ways that we may could, could take the building and save the mural, but I mean, just if you even touched it, uh, more tiles would fall off of it. Hogan explained the mural had suffered damage beyond repair and was not considered an historic landmark in Mississippi. And um, it just wasn't feasible to do what we needed to do with that property and save the mosaic, unfortunately. The board mentioned demolishing the Pat Harrison building did not come as an easy decision. But however, their minds are set towards the future and sometimes their decisions come with a price. Corey Howard, Fox 23 News. Currently no timeline for when Forest General will move into that vacant spot. We'll update you as that information becomes available. Hattiesburg Public School District Foundation hosts the inaugural Hattiesburg Hall of Fame class induction. Now the two day event kicked off with a mix and mingle at Hotel Indigo in Midtown. Fox 23's Alyssa Cole was there and has more. A Hattiesburg High laid the foundation on which I was able to build to have the success that I currently have. Those are the words of Hattiesburg Public School District distinguished alumni. Sometimes my students ask me if I thought I would be a president when I was in school and I say no because they didn't make women presidents of anything at all. From professional star athletes. Only person say what you can't do is you. So I wasn't going to let nobody tell me what I couldn't do. So it was in the back of my mind that I was going to go out and I was going to make the NFL. To professional star songwriters. I've, I won Grammys, CMAs, ACMs, um, and then I actually won the, uh, I'm blown away, a couple of years ago I won the uh, most performed country songwriter in, in the century. Hattiesburg's Public School District Foundation will induct 14 successful school alumni into the first ever Hall of Fame. Well, it's humbling, yeah, I know, because I know how many came before me, how many came after me, uh, all the good that people have done, and to be selected as one uh, is, is very humbling and, and it's a great honor. Including the recent late James Ray Carpenter, former national president of PGA and golf person of the year. His son Jimmy Carpenter says before his father passed just two weeks ago, he was elated to receive an invitation. He did his little dance and he did his smile and he talked about 
this particular day. Uh, so I'm excited for him on behalf of our whole family. The family of the late Jesse Brown, the first African-American pilot in the United States Navy, says the honor complements his legacy well. We're very proud. Uh, his legacy lives on and we just hope that uh, it will inspire other young people to persevere, to never give up on your dreams. Several other noted alumni say it's an honor to be in the midst of Hattiesburg School family and pay special homage to teachers, mentors, and old friends who shaped their talents and potential years ago. Alyssa Cole, Fox 23 News. Two-day Hall of Fame homecoming week continues tomorrow with the induction or the inductee brunch at the Hattiesburg Public School Central Office. Forest General receiving an anonymous donation that will be on display right when you walk through the hospital doors. Visitors entering the hospital will notice this beautiful grand piano. The piano plays music all by itself and hospital officials say music really is a good way to welcome a new baby into a family or maybe a way to lift the weight of worry when leaving the hospital. We had a, a donor and actually an anonymous donor who had a passion and a vision and wanted to see a player piano in this lobby because you know music can so many times just heal the soul and it's relaxing and everybody is in here dealing with different situations daily and this was his opportunity to make a difference and just to try to help people in their day-to-day -day walk. Well, the piano will play Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Hospital will also welcome guest musicians to play it as well. Visit Hattiesburg announces the city's first October Feast Restaurant Week, set for October 7th through the 14th. Several restaurants downtown, midtown, and out west will participate in the seven-day social media food scene highlight. Participants will have a chance to try chief specials uh, for discounted prices. So if you think about just the footprint of food in Hattiesburg and all the wonderful cocktails, the craft cocktails, our craft beer industry, all the wonderful things that you can eat from sun up to sundown and late nights in between, we are seeing a tremendous amount of participation from restaurants throughout our community. Well, if you participate in October Feast, uh, visit Hattiesburg encourages you to take photos of your food. Use hashtag Eat Hberg to receive prizes. <laughs> All right, coming up after the break, we're going to look at how to use electronic devices in a healthy way. And it seems like the entire country is talking about Brett Kavanaugh, including our own Randy Swan. time is too much time on electronics. Yeah, now some, some important information from parents in your Healthy Minute. Your Healthy Minute, a health and wellness resource provided by Forest Health. In today's digitally connected world, parents may find themselves asking how much time is too much time for kids on social media. Ashley Halford discusses the importance of limiting social media use in teens and children. Well, you know, as teenagers, you know, their peers are extremely important. Um, and so that's where social media, you know, has its pull, either for good or for not. Um, so you can get affirmed. Um, through social media, you know, through the number of likes you have, the comments, um, things like that. But then again, you can also get really pulled down. You really want to keep those communication lines open. If they're struggling in school, if they're not acting like themselves, if they're isolating, the grades are falling, they're getting in fights in school, um, if they're off their baseline behaviors, 
Um, you definitely need to look into their social media life. You got to have transparency. Now, of course, teenagers aren't going to like that. <laughs> they are not going to like that. But we've got to do it with boundaries and we've got to be smart about it for your benefit. If the child is either a victim of the bullying and it's causing them emotional distress or if certainly if the child is being the bully, um, that you need to seek professional help, you know, for your child. Well, in less than 48 hours, America should know if it will have a new Supreme Court justice. The Senate expected to vote on Brett Kavanaugh this weekend. Regional News Director Randy Swan has some thoughts on the process that brought us to this point. Here's Regional News Director Randy Swan with tonight's Swan Song. I don't know when I've been more disgusted with our political system as I am right now, and I blame both sides of the aisle. I've had to bite my tongue more times than you can imagine in the last week or so over the Brett Kavanaugh public spectacle they call a hearing. Even the Joseph McCarthy Senate witch hunt of the 1950s seemed pale in comparison. I could go over the talking points thrown out by both sides, but it all boils down to one thing. Whatever happened to innocent until proven guilty? The 6th and 14th Amendments of the Constitution guarantees the right to a fair, speedy, and public trial and equal justice for all. It's the cornerstone of American justice. But in this particular judicial circus, they call a confirmation hearing, justice was not only blind, but highly partisan and downright ugly. A full day of testimony by two combatants shed very little light on the matter at hand, but it did illustrate just how divided our country is when it comes to power. One side has it, the other side will do anything to get it. Even before Kavanaugh's nomination was announced, I warned that whoever is selected will be subjected to character assassination, mainly because of the man who is doing the selecting. With the world watching and serving as a witness, I can only hope that our senators will vote their conscience and not what is politically expedient. I'm Randy Swan, and this is my Swan Song. Fox 23 invites you to share your opinion on Facebook or send us your comments to myfox23 at whpmtv.com. Meteorologist Alyssa Triplett returns with your full forecast after the break. Welcome back to a look at your weather. Looking at this almanac for today, we are seeing that that high temperature got up to 90 degrees here in Hattiesburg and seeing that that is seven degrees above average and we'll continue to see that these temperatures are going to be above average, which it's still normal to see that 90s will be here and there throughout October, but we'd like to see these temperatures try to be cooling off and feeling a little bit more like fall. We stayed dry today as well. Majority of the showers stayed off to the south, allowing for us to stay dry, but the weekend may be looking like we'll have some showers. So across, we're seeing that those 90s were really the picture 90 in Hattiesburg as well as Laurel. Meridian got up to 92 and then 88 in Wigan. So these temperatures still feeling above average and we'll see that that will continue. What we're seeing is that we're still in this maroon area and red area of seeing that we'll have these above average temperatures even until the end of October is what we're or into the middle of October. But one thing to note is that this gradient is very tight. So if we have a switch in the jet stream that's allowing for us to stay fairly uh, warm and then the north to stay fairly cold, 
If we see that jet stream move though, there just be a quick change in the weather and we could see fall come within just a few days and having temperatures get down into the 70s. We'll see that we'll currently look at that radar. No showers. We're not going to see any possibilities tonight and tomorrow's looking like another dry day as well, but the weekend's looking like some showers are possible. We're still having this high pressure system located just here on the eastern coast, which is bringing in some warmer air and then bringing in that tropical air that's allowing for it to feel fairly humid and feel more summer like as it's bringing in a lot of tropical air from the Atlantic and even from the Gulf as they have been staying fairly active throughout this whole hurricane season. We've been staying fairly quiet the last few weeks, but we are going to see that there's still some disturbances here and there. Tonight, though, we'll get down to 70, still fairly humid overnight, but those skies will be clear and waking up to a clear sky as well. Seeing that sunshine shining right away at 8 a.m. That high will get up to 92 degrees tomorrow, and we'll continue with those mostly sunny conditions and temperatures climbing right back up into the low 90s as that high temperature. As we see here, sunshine all day, and then that feel like temperature Temperature has the potential to even reach as high as 99 degrees, and maybe even see a triple digit here and there across much of the parts of Mississippi, north and south of the area. So we'll see that this pattern will stay consistent tomorrow, but maybe possibly showers. What we're seeing is there's a low pressure system and a disturbance down on the Yucatan Peninsula, and it, there's that possibility to see maybe a strengthening of this low pressure system if it does organize. And when it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, we're seeing that there's that slight chance right now. It's under a 10%, but it could change as it moves closer to the Gulf to become maybe possibly even a tropical storm as it moves through next week. And even if it doesn't, it still has the possibility to bring even some heavier rain chances for our area into next week as we're going to see that. We'll see some chances for showers this weekend, which is just some built up from the tropical moisture we're having. Temperatures break the 90s, but then we see that we become cloudy, but still see that humidity as that tropical air will still creep towards Hattiesburg. We'll be back right after this break. Good evening. Welcome back to Fox 23 News. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Fox 23 News. I'm Nicole Menner. With college basketball season just about one month out, the Bulldogs held their first media day of this season ahead of Wednesday's practice. The Dogs earned a trip to Madison Square Garden last season, but came up short in the NIT tourney. Coach Ben Howland spoke about his team's goals for this season and how the rest of the SEC stacks up. Our, our team, uh, obviously, we want to uh, do really well in the SEC. We're trying to win the SEC. I mean, that's the goal. And, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, an incredible task, whoever comes out of this league. I mean, right now you got to look at the favorites are, you know, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Auburn based on, you know, last year and what they have back. And, you know, LSU is going to be incredibly tough. I mean, there's so many teams here. I mean, I, I think that Alabama and uh, – 
uh, Florida are going to be really, really good. I mean, our, this league is going to be incredibly tough, but that's our goal. If, you, you know, you come out and you finish on the top of this league, you can get a high seed in the NCAA tournament. And you know, everybody's trying to get the NCAA tournament. That's a given. The Pelicans will look for their first win of the preseason tomorrow night against the Knicks after falling to the Bulls and Hawks earlier this week. Of course, preseason is about working on team chemistry rather than winning, and Coach Alvin Gentry spoke about what his team has done well so far. Well, I think we did a lot of good things. You know, obviously the first half uh, we tried to play, you know, somewhat of a rotation that you might see, and then uh, second half, you know, not playing AD and those guys at all. Obviously, the game is going to change, but. Uh, I thought that we got done what we, we needed to uh, in those first 24 minutes. I think we're at a good pace. I still think that we have to get better and we'll get better with the pace as we get better conditioning. Uh, I thought today was much, much better. We, when we play these, uh, you know, these four minute games to see if we can stay at a real, real high uh, pace for those four minutes. And then, you know, we'll add six minutes, eight minutes uh, as, as uh, you know, in the next, you know, four or five practices of games and try to get it to the level where we wanted to have it. The Yankees defended their home field last night, taking down the Oakland A's in the AL wildcard game. Yanks ace Luis Severino rising to the challenge, holding Oakland hitless until the fifth inning while fanning seven batters. And of course, Aaron Judge and John Carlos Stanton doing what the Yankees pay them to do. Mash home runs. Judges coming in the first off Liam Hendricks to put the pinstripes up two to nothing early on. And Stanton's would be the icing on top of the cake in the eighth inning. Playing his first ever postseason game, he crushes it with the ball leaving the bat at 117.4 miles per hour. So the Yankees win 7-2. Now off to Boston to face the Red Sox in the ALDS. The first time the rivals will meet in the playoffs since the ALCS in 2004. Mark is definitely giving me a look right now, but it's okay. We're just not going to talk for a week. All right, well, we've waited four weeks, and now Mark Ingram is finally back practicing with the Saints after serving his four-game suspension. And the Saints offense just got a whole lot more dangerous. The Saints offense averaging 418 yards per game and 34 points. And between Alvin Kamara and Ingram, teams are going to have a hard time slowing the two down. Obviously excited to be back. You know, uh, being away from the team, it's not easy. Um, but, uh, you know, I was working and being with my family, and... Uh, you know, I'm excited to be back with these guys. My world on Sundays like just, you know, sitting there watching on TV. What was it like for you? They sucked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they weren't cool, you know. But uh, when we were winning games, it made it better, you know. So um, I was excited, you know, to see us winning and playing well. And uh, just being able to get back with these guys and uh, be with the team, that, that, of course, you know, something I was looking forward to every every day. Definitely will be, uh, the Saints will be happy to have him back. And like I said, their offense can't really get much better. So, yep. It's about to. All right, stick around. We'll be, we'll be back right after this. One last look at that seven day planner tomorrow. Still another day that feels a lot like summer. We'll have that sunshine out there, that humidity around, and those feel like temperatures have the potential to reach the triple digits. As we move through the weekend, we'll continue to feel those humidity values as there's going to be some scattered storms throughout much of Mississippi and Alabama and even into Louisiana and see that maybe just a possibly a shower on Sunday as well. We're going to continue to see lots of tropical air be coming up from the Gulf, which will be causing these temperatures to feel a lot warmer than they actually are. And next week actually might be a little bit more rainier than we've been seeing. We've been seeing just lots of sunshine, but now it looks like some clouds and rain is going to be in store for us.
right. Thanks for joining us on Fox 23 News at 9. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Follow us online, like us on Facebook, and visit our website, myfox23.com.